I think what has been missing so much in the last two, three years was the ability to connect on a day-to-day -day basis with voters. To make matters worse, that ability has been hijacked by Najib. Of course, Najib, I think, is delusional for thinking that he's popular. Um, we still run uh, data on monthly basis. Nothing suggests that Najib is popular. Um, the number of people who believe that he was guilty is above 80% throughout, and that includes UMNO members. Um, his level of support to become Prime Minister is at 3%. is a lot lower than the current Prime Minister, regardless of how people think about the current Prime Minister. So that tells a lot. But why is it that he has traction with the social media? Because he took the populist approach to voice out day-to-day -day issues that we used to do when we were in opposition. So effectively, Najib is a de facto opposition to this government. I mean, of course, we can see right through it. You know, he had no intention to really fight for the people. He's just fighting for himself. But he's opportunistic enough to have a team. I'm sure he has a lot of money. He got his money back, you know, to hire a team to consistently try to connect to the public. That is something that we used to do before we got into government. I think um, Pakatan supporters, more or less, were used to you know, being updated with the issues, being given enlightenment about what's happening. It's not enough to say we are Pakatan and we are better. They actually want to know if you say that prices should go down, how exactly do you intend to do it? What is wrong with the current process? When you say it's AP, who actually got the AP? Um, and they want to see you carry through this until fruition at the risk to yourself. And this takes a lot of discipline, you know. Um, and I think that was missing. That's the clear, the, the, the narrative has been missing because partly when everyone went to become a minister, you know, um, you know, after we lost government, I think people carry on as if they are ministers. Um, and then um, some of the newer MPs, they went in um, and um, they were part of a government. So the, the, the culture was very different, you know. Um, and I know the media, you guys know that my preoccupation back then was always about managing the narrative. It's always about what to focus. So, for example, when I first came back in 2010, one thing that I really wanted to change is about Malay attitude towards corruption. So hence, the series of um, exposé that I did is to build a story and narrative that is, is, is harmful even to the Malays. And I think by now, Malays by and large, you know, to a certain extent, actually care about corruption. Likewise, after 2013, you know, we realised that no matter how bad corruption was, um, there were enough Malays who felt that um, um, Amno is a custodian and guardian of everything that is Malay in this country. Yeah? So that's when I started focusing on Tabung Haji, on Mara, on Felda, on all the Malay institutions to prove the point, look, you've left this to this Amno for the last 60 years. They've basically brought these institutions to its knees. It took us about three years to consistently, you know, check and follow up and so on. So it's, again, it's a lot of hard work. So putting the narrative and connecting with the masses is a lot more than just basically playing Twitter or making speeches in parliament. You really have to connect with them. And that takes a lot of work, that takes consistency. And that is what Najib is doing now. So that initiative has, be take, has to be taken back from Najib. Um, and for that to happen, sometimes we have to be candid. We have to call a spade a spade. If that means that we have to point fingers and tell off Pakatan Harapan leadership, we have to. Because that's what the public wants. Unfortunately, what we have in the last two, three years, you know, perhaps in order to maintain harmony, perhaps, you know, I, I really don't understand what's happening. Um, but that has been missing. 
And because of that, the differentiation that Pakatan Harapan and PKR spoke for the public got diluted along the way. So by the time we went into general uh, to, into Johor election, you know, um, we tested with forty thousand fan sitters. Their answer was very shocking. The answer was that you know there's not much difference between PN, BN, PH, or PKR. They're all just looking after themselves. It's all about positions for themselves. So, you know. If I were to choose then, might as well choose BN right? because at least they have been around for much longer. I know what it is. So those people, because we also tested whom they voted in the last general election, those people voted for Pakatan in the last general election. That's the thinking now. So um, unless we reconnect, unless we put you know, um, the consistent um, efforts to build narratives again, um, it's not enough just to, to tell that we are PH and PKR and therefore we are automatically better than the rest. In fact, to a lot of fancy tests, that's considered holier than doubt. That's something that we must stop doing now. We have to earn back their respect and say that we are better because we are one, two, three, four, five, and, and walk the talk.